Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can create a text scroll or basically have the text scroll horizontally through the screen using Text Mesh Pro. Um, so we're going to do this because I have a user who is asking about how to do such a thing. So I thought it would be good to make a video about it. So what I've got in terms of the setup is I'm using Unity 4.6, but I could be using Unity 5.0. Um, I'm using the canvas. Uh, the canvas is set to screen space overlay, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, I have an image component, which is a sprite. I'm just using the sprite button, nothing fancy. And it's basically this gray area here that I've positioned at the bottom of the screen. Uh, now, since we're going to scroll from one end of the screen to the other, we don't need to use a masking component. But if we uh, wanted to scroll through a smaller region of the screen, we would simply add a masking component here. I'll actually do it. And you can see that the text got masked right there uh, based on the size of this you know, uh, image that we've got here. So let's remove that. And when you do that, by the way, Text Mesh Pro, you don't need to do anything. It knows there's a mask component. It creates a masking component, and that's it. You don't need to worry about anything. So that's our image. Uh, then we have a child uh, attached to this, which is a Text Mesh Pro text object. Uh, again, if you're new to Text Mesh Pro, how would you add this? Well, to add an object as a child, I'd select the parent, right click to bring up the context menu, go to UI, and instead of picking the UI text, I would pick this one, which is the Text Mesh Pro component. So our Text Mesh Pro component is right here. Our text is basically aligned to the left. I've set the anchors right there so that we're centered into this image thing. Uh, since we're only uh, looking at one single line of text, the word wrapping, which is right here, is disabled because we don't need multiple lines of text. We don't need to play with the overflow modes at all. Uh, I did enable extra padding because the text is kind of small, so I want to make sure we have enough padding here. So whenever the text, uh, when the text is fairly big, like this on screen, you don't need that. Uh, but when it gets tiny, uh, it's a good idea to turn that on. I've also enabled kerning, so you can see, you know, the benefit mostly like the T, E, and some of the letters. So I just enable kerning because it looks cooler. Uh, and then the next important thing is uh, I have a content size fitter uh, set to horizontal fit preferred size. That basically means that as I add more text, our uh, rec transform, you know, uh, adjusts automatically. And that's it. So let's delete this extra text. And I have like a slash T for a tab so I can get this extra little space here. This is it for our setup. So the idea is we're going to uh, use a script to move the rec transform to the left. Um, and the script basically I added an empty game object and create a small script here. And it has two public fields. One is going to hold a reference to our text mesh pro object. And the other one is just the speed. Let's go take a look at our script. So since we're using Text Mesh Pro, we're going to uh, reference the namespace of Text Mesh Pro. Then there's our two public fields. One's going to hold a reference to the Text Mesh Pro object. Then in awake, we're going to get a reference to the rec transform of the Text Mesh Pro object. Then I made start a coroutine. First thing we're going to do is get the width of our text object. We're going to use preferred width, but I could have used the bounds as well. That would have worked. Uh, then we're going to get what the starting position of the rec transform is. Our scroll position here is going to be an offset, so we're going to start at zero. Then we'll skip this part. We'll come back to it. And then uh, as the coroutine runs, basically right now every frame, we're going to change the position of our rec transform. And we're going to change it by basically taking the scroll position, which starts at zero, plus basically scroll speed times 20 times time dot delta time. And we're going to basically take the scroll speed and scroll to the left. So we're going to go negative on it. And then modulus of the width. So basically every time the scroll position gets bigger than the width, the whole thing's going to warp back to zero. So we have kind of a loop going. And let's take a look at this in action. So I'm going to enter play mode and we'll select the text object. So as you can see, it's scrolling to the left. And as this piece here, the end of it, gets to uh, the width, which would be right here, it will warp back and repeat the cycle. 
which is kind of what we wanted, but not exactly what we wanted. So as you can see here, you know, it warps back to the same point. But the issue is, well, wait a minute. You know, once it gets to the end of our text, then we've got all this extra space at the end. It would be kind of cool if it repeated itself, because if it doesn't, then we get this pop. You know, as the text warps, we get, you know, a bunch of text magically appearing on screen, which is not cool. So how are we going to solve this? Well, I guess we could go and mess around with the string itself. Uh, the problem with that is, well, we're looking at, you know, if we do string manipulations, we're looking at garbage collection, not cool. Second, well, if we add more text, then the width is going to change because the content size fitter is going to change it. Or if we're looking at the bounds, it's going to expand. So then we're going to have to figure out how we're going to know what's the original text, not the new text, whatever. It just kind of gets messy. So instead, let's just take a shortcut. The shortcut is pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our script. And I'm going to uncomment this here. And the idea is, in awake, we're going to create a clone of this object, of the text object. We're going to parent this clone to the original text object. And we're going to basically put it on the back end of the other text object. So as we do this, let's save it. And let's go back here and take a look. I will enter play mode and pause. So what we've done is we've slapped this other text object right on the back end of it. So now if I let it play, as the parent scrolls, then the child is being dragged behind. And since the area that we care about is right here, it looks like now we're looping. But it's the child object right here that's parented to this other one. And as it goes through, since the two are identical, as we pop from one to the other, you don't notice you know obviously in scene view we see it but in game view you don't see anything so this is actually pretty efficient and it's actually kind of cool because i can go to the end of it and i could say this is new text now the idea is you know obviously don't update the text when it's scrolling because you're you're adding but i can dynamically add more text and it will automatically update the child object and both of them to do exactly what we want and that's the part that it skipped over so I'm just checking look as I loop through this every frame as the text component changed if it has get the new width assign the new text to the child and we're done right so now let's go back here whoops wrong place and let's uh, actually bring up our profiler to just take a look at what's going on so I'm going to bring up the profiler put it on deep profile and I'll actually clear what's there and enter play mode. Right now, what we're actually doing is we're actually only scrolling the rec transform. So if I go somewhere here and I go into canvas, send will render canvas, and I expand that, that's our text mesh pro component. We can see that the two text objects are static. So there's nothing being regenerated. Text mesh pro is just, you know, it doesn't take any CPU time or anything. So this is actually very efficient in terms of a way to do that. Um, so let's stop the profiler. I actually created a build of this, which I'm going to start. And I'll just play it so you can all see it and go right there. So right now we're scrolling through our text and because I'm recording on top of this it's kinda affecting the text but you can see that as it loops through it's seamless and there's no way to know where it actually started and where it ends and actually which one's the original uh, text object. So um, right now I chose to use the canvas system with the text mesh pro uh, uh, component that works with that the way you add uh, the different text mesh pro components there are two of them so in this case i already showed you can go to create ui and choose the text mesh pro component here and this one works with the new ui but i could have done the same example using the mesh renderer so i would have gone to 3d object and selected the text mesh pro object there instead of uh, I wouldn't have needed to use a content size fitter because I could have actually checked the bounds of the text object too. Um, using, if I was to do like a, a, a text crawl like I'm showing here, 
um, in world space or whatever didn't need to do it you know sort of a in a UI for example I would actually use the mesh renderer since uh, it's a more efficient component whereas the canvas if you have like a bunch of objects underneath the canvas if any of the sub objects change then the whole canvas needs to be rebuilt so anyway this is it for this video um, it like I said it's just a simple example to show uh, to one of my users how this could be done and I thought it would be interesting to kind of look at it so should you have any questions or comments please uh, please uh, feel free to post and thank you for watching